Good Tuesday evening to you. Thank you for joining us. A big night here in Arizona as hundreds of thousands of people vote in the primary election. Results have been steadily rolling in now for the past two hours. We have live team coverage of all the results plus analysis of the major races from the U.S. Senate seat to Maricopa County Attorney, key congressional races as well. Let's get to some of those results and the matchups we now know we'll see in November. Our political editor Dennis Welch here. The November matchup for the U.S. Senate seat set Democrat. Ruben Gallego now facing uh, Republican Carrie Lake on this one. Yeah, it, it, it looks like that's going to be a really high profile, high stakes, a lot of money going to be sent in that because the, uh, you know, when you when you look at a race like this and you look at the broader picture, the broader Senate map out there, this is one of those races that could determine the balance of power when you start looking at which party controls the upper chamber in our nation's capital. So this is going to be a key race. Uh, so far, polls have been indicating that uh, Ruben Gallego has been running pretty well. He was actually running above uh, Joe Biden and doing better in, here in, in our state. Uh, in, in, you know, and so we'll see how that all plays out. Carrie Lake tonight, uh, you know, kind of underperformed, I got to say, as far as what we're seeing right now in terms of percentage of the vote in the primary, 53 percent. I think she would have liked to have seen, really liked to have seen a much higher percentage of the numbers. Um, just to, to look at this and say over 200,000 Republicans decided to go with Mark Lamb in this one means that she might have some work to do with some reluctant Republicans. Now, I do believe most of them will come back to the party in November, but there could be some ones that it could take some convincing at this point. And that race is very close. I mean, Ruben Gallego had a very easy past couple of months, ran unopposed. Now the work, real work, begins for him and for Kerry Lake. Yeah, and you know, and if Ruben's been running this, it seems like forever, and for a long time he was the only person running in this race, and now he does get to you know focus on uh, the Kerry, the Kerry Lake race as as, as this opponent. Um, it seems like he's got a lot of momentum behind him right now, Kerry Lake's. A challenge is going to be to try to, you know, try to, try to block that. This is going to be uh, very much, very, I believe, a negative campaign. And you already saw some mm. of that coming out it's already begun. this evening when Carrie Lake took the stage in her victory speech. Yes, yeah, some visceral words, not just with mm -hmm. that campaign, but a number of them this evening. Dennis Welch, thank you so much for that. And our Michael Ramondi, he has been live at Carrie Lake's watch party. Uh, she addressed the crowd just a short while ago. What was her message tonight, Michael? Well, first of all, I think it was an enthusiastic crowd. I know Dennis was just talking about maybe the late campaign expected this to be a little bit of a larger gap between her and her opponent, Sheriff Mark Lamb in Pinal County. But the people here, I don't think, cared as much about that. At this point, they were here to celebrate that Carrie Lake got the nomination for the Republicans here in Arizona running for Senate. As of right now, things have certainly started to die down. Most of the people have left, ex except a few people here behind us late then after her speech, which she spoke for about 30 minutes or so, then went around and spoke to the people who waited to do a bit of a meet and greet. Now, during that speech, she talked about her family, thanked her supporters, typical thing she talked about, and then it turned into the issues. Bidenomics, as Republicans have called, inflation here across the country, also talking about the border. She then went on to talk about how it's really time to save the country, and she thinks that she is the candidate who can do that. She said President Trump needs help in the Senate in Washington, D.C., and Lake said that she is the person to do that. She definitely got pretty personal with some of the attacks on her now opponent, Ruben Gallego, the Democrat running for Senate. We'll certainly hear from him coming up a little later in the show. But the night dwindling down, but the excitement, sure here. Talked to some people who said that they were Carrie Lake supporters two years ago when she ran for governor. Some people were new to supporting her. So getting a bit of a mix here tonight, but certainly a MAGA crowd, a lot of Trump supporters here for the Trump-endorsed candidate, Carrie Lake. Reporting live in Phoenix tonight, I'm Michael Raimondi for Arizona's family. I'll send it back to you. All right, Michael, thank you. And Lake's rival, Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb, telling supporters at his watch party tonight that he does not plan to concede until all of the votes are counted. That's even with a 14% difference between those two. Earlier this evening, he told supporters that he wanted to run with honor. And whether he wins or loses, he says he will do it with honor. Democrat Ruben Gallego leaving his congressional seat to run for Senate and had a pretty easy primary season, but now he knows for sure he will be facing Carrie Lake in November. Casey Torres joining us live in Phoenix with more on what Gallego had to say tonight about the general election battle with Lake. 
Right, so Congressman Ruben Gallego feels good tonight, and he was joking tonight as well, saying that he did win the primary. Of course, he was going unopposed, so that's something that uh, he says he doesn't really know if it added an edge to his campaign or not, but he was prepared no matter what was going to be happening tonight. And even though uh, Kerry Lake's race against Sheriff Mark Lamb was fairly close, Gallego tells me that he does not look at those numbers that that's not what matters to him. It's really more about how he's campaigning and how he's reaching out to Arizonans. Now, this is a closely watched race for a seat that could, could determine Senate control and Gallego's path as the Democratic Senate candidate again was cleared when Democrat Senator Kirsten Sinema switched over to an independent and bowed out from re-election. Again, Gallego said he couldn't tell for sure if running unopposed gave him an edge in the race to the Senate seat, but he did add that he is running the strongest race possible no matter who would have come out on top in this primary. All I can do is control what I do, and I know that I am running a great race. I am talking to voters all the time. We are reaching across the aisle. We are talking to Arizona businessmen on the border. We're talking to our sheriffs uh, on the border. We have support from so many border mayors uh, and uh, you know border county supervisors because they understand that we are, you know, we have a very deep understanding about border security. He says that this in Arizona, it is a competitive state, no doubt about that. But he's, again, just going to keep doing what he's been doing in this race. Now, I also asked him about President Biden dropping out of the presidential race and Vice President Kamala Harris potentially becoming the Democratic presidential nominee. Gallego said he doesn't think the twists and turns of that election change much for his race, but it definitely adds some excitement, including the possibility of Senator Mark Kelly being picked as Harris's running mate. Al uh, Gallego said that he will be campaigning with Harris, and we do know that Harris is planning to make a stop in Phoenix next week for her campaign. However, Gallego tells me that he has not gotten an invitation yet to be campaigning alongside her, so we're just going to wait to see what happens with that. But he is confident that he's going to be winning that U.S. Senate seat. Gallego said that he is uh, ready for this race saying that he is going to be our state's senator. Now, the Real Clear polling website does show numerous recent polls showing Gallego up uh, by an average of three to four points over Lake. Reporting live in Phoenix, Casey Torres, Arizona's family. All right, we'll certainly see Casey Torres live for us tonight. Thank you. All right, let's get to a few more results with our political editor, Dennis Welch. You're looking at a number of races uh, which could change some of the top leadership in Maricopa County. Yeah, and these are races, obviously, I mean, they're much closer to everyday, our viewers' yeah. lives, everyday mm -hmm. lives. Um, and I did want to kind of point some of that stuff out. And there are a number of incumbents here in, in Maricopa County that are trailing in the primaries. First of all, let's start with Stephen Richer right now. He is a, a losing right now to Justin Heap by about 6,000 votes. Maricopa County Sheriff, let's move over to that race. He's in the Democratic primary. Um, he's trailing right now in that primary to Tyler Camp. And again, I'll say this again, Ru uh, Russ Skinner, Got, got a lot of uh, you know news earlier when he switched parties from being a longtime Republican to being a Democrat to get this seat in the Democratic voters this tonight, sending a message they don't like longtime Republicans running in their primaries. Now, let's move over to County Supervisor Jack Sellers. Um, he's winning by a pretty uh, healthy margin, or losing by a pretty healthy margin at this point. Um, and that means it could open up a seat in the county uh, of an opportunity for Democrats. They see that there could be a pick up in the general election again in Jack Sellers' seat over in Supervisor District 1. Now, there are a number of incumbents here in the county who do appear on the path to November. Those include District 2 Supervisor Thomas Galvin, who leads Michelle Ugenti Rita, the former state lawmaker, by about 12,000 votes, and County Attorney Rachel Mitchell, who leads Gina Godby here by 49 thousand votes. So big picture, when we, we when we start tracking all, all this stuff, when we start looking ahead to January, you've got a five-member board of supervisors. 
Only two will be returning from this year. And if you look even bigger picture than that, most of the, uh, the board that oversaw the 2020 and the 2022 elections are going to be gone because, uh, you know, not only is Sellers losing tonight, uh, current uh, supervisor Bill Gates has stepped down along as Clint Hickman. Um, you know, so a lot of things happen, a lot of big changes um, at the county. Well, Gates and Hickman both said they were fed up with the yeah. harassment that they've been getting for years from yeah. people who deny the election results and they've been targeted. One of them went into hiding with his family for a mm -hmm. while, so they said they want out. Now, it's one of the people who wants one of those jobs is Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, mm -hmm. who's leaving her seat in the Northwest Valley, trying to get on the Board of Supervisors. Yeah, and she looks to be uh, pretty on to victory. Easy win here tonight. She was, again, former Congresswoman, former state lawmaker mm -hmm. before that. Coming back home here, she's going to be serving on the County Board of Supervisor. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what that's going to be like. Kate Brophy McGee, another former lawmaker yeah. looks like state lawmaker looks like she's well on her way to going and joining the county board of supervisors so it's going to have a very different look the only two people returning to the board are going to be thomas galvin as we mentioned earlier and the lone democrat on the board at steve gallardo um so different leadership we're gonna have it looks like we're gonna have a different recorder a lot of a lot of changes at the county mm. all right all right dennis welch thank you